Alrighty guys, so I want to be showing you the very simple way to adjust slash remove, replace the serpentine belt on a Jeep Cherokee XJ. The XJ has been around since freaking ever, as in like first XJ I believe was in 1986 or an 87. I'm not sure, I'm not an XJ expert, but all I know is it's very, very simple to change the belts, adjust them, power steering pump, everything like that. Freaking easy. As long as you have patience. I don't have patience, so it was actually kind of hard for me. Um, intelligence and how to work on it. Some to a lot of people don't know how to do it because this is maybe their first vehicle and they're, you know, in high school, freshman, you know, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you guys how to do it really easy. A few different steps. Um, first of all, you want to check to make sure that there is a belt routing diagram. It actually shows you that there is the belt removal slash adjuster pulley. Now, if this isn't here, you need to either use your phone, take a picture, or just take a piece of paper and draw out the actual routing of the belt. Now, we get to, you know, some of the mechanical stuff. This right here is your adjuster bolt. If you tighten it, it'll pull the, the pulley to the top tightening the belt. If you loosen it, it actually drops this pulley right down there and it pull, pulls it down which will loosen the belt so you can take it off. Now in this case this is a power steering pump off a 96 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee um, and you, you can see here this line this is also the main pressure line and the power steering, uh, power steering pump itself is actually the same, but the only difference is, is that this pulley is bigger, about half an inch in diameter. And this main pressure line is bent differently, so it actually sticks up farther, and it's supposed to be uh, flat right here and run this way. But luckily everything fits in the same way, so if you need to actually, if you got a spare Jeep or spare parts laying around, you could actually use a 96 or you could actually use a Grand Cherokee power steering pump. Now, to change the power steering pump, you need to loosen this bolt up. You actually have to max or, you know, get this adjusted as loosely as possible to be able to get the belt onto this new pulley just because of how big it is. So anyway, once you pull that off, you have three bolts here. One, two, and down there three. And if you look in here, there's actually little ports where you could stick a socket and a ratchet in and get the bolts out a lot faster. And then once you do that, well, before you actually loosen those up all the way, I'd recommend taking a wrench and pulling this line off here. Now, be careful pulling this line off because sometimes that fitting doesn't actually release off the line and the line will actually start to twist and it will break and leak everywhere and will make you very mad. So what I did before is I was able to try to PB blast it and I got this side freed up but the side on the gearbox broke off unfortunately so I had to replace the line. That's why I had to go with this Grand Cherokee line. But this power steering main line is right down there on the gearbox. And you can pull that off, pull this off, the line will remove. Once you remove those bolts, power steering pump will slide out of the bracket here. And then you can go ahead and reverse the steps. Very simple. But, forgot about this, but you do have to pull the electric fan, which is really simple. you got two bolts here and here. And if you already removed your electric fan a long time ago, you don't have to worry about this. But then this will just pop out of the way. Water pump's a different story, but we'll get to that on a longer date. I haven't had a water pump go out of any of my 4 liters yet, just because somebody's already did it before I bought them. So, luckily that's happened. The alternator, different story. You have two bolts and uh, just the battery connections. Let me see if I can get you guys down here. As you can see, I'm gonna get my flashlight on here. You got one, two bolts there, and you have to remove the belt, obviously. And then this alternator will actually should come right off once you have that belt off. And then your battery connections 
are in the back. And then you just gotta reverse the steps. But as you can see, these four liters are all have these very common front seal leaks, oil leaks basically freaking everywhere. But it's just a Jeep thing. If it starts knocking, throw some Lucas in it. It'll be fine. It's a Jeep. Ugh. Don't mind my flip flops. But anyway, just wanted to throw out that video. Um quick very quick another thing is uh, between 99 and 2001 Chrysler decided to go from distributor you got your cap and rotor distributor everything like that to coils now what I like about this XJ is it still has a distributor so you don't have to worry about um, shorting out coils and having a really bad misfire when you go to tracking um, the distributor and plugs and wires and like that are very easy um, what I like doing when you're changing your plugs and wires is you always do one plug at a time. So if I'm starting from cylinder one, I pull this wire, pull it off the distributor, pull it off the plug, pull, put the new plug in, put the new wire on, and just go that way alongside the engine block. That ensures that you've done it correctly and you never have to worry about it again. Now when you have the coil situation, um, coils... I guess supposedly last longer and I guess they're trying to go for a more fuel efficient design but I think the coils on these motors are junk because as soon as any water or anything gets in there remember a coil is computer actuated and it's an electronic piece so if any water gets on it it's going to short out and not work um, so that'll cause a really bad misfire for your check engine light uh, dramatically alter your fuel efficiency and could potentially harm the engine. Um, I've seen a lot of these engines hydro lock, um, well, yeah, hydro lock, freaking overheat, stuff like that. But these engines are very simple to work with, especially if you have an older version that's got the uh, carbureted intake on it. Um, very simple to work with. Awesome power horses, great wheelers, good everyday drivers. Just an all-out good vehicle. Um, this one's not that rusty, and it's got some good tires on it. And the air conditioning works, surprisingly. But anyway, sorry about this mangled-together video, but I hope it helps some of you guys out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.